All right, in this video, I wanna talk about the experience of the iPad Pro on specifically on how it's like from a tech creator who creates content um, more on the short form side and of course some long form like this video here and also the experience of traveling with it going to events and all that stuff so i want to start off with saying i have been editing oh i did edit content on this 2018 ipad pro and this is i believe this is the first one that came out as 11 inch and i've actually edited video full-blown long form like 16 minute videos for another tech creator and i know it's possible i know that coming into or buying the ipad 2024 that is possible so i wasn't scared of buying this knowing that i can't edit or how it's like editing i just haven't experienced final cut yet because i've done a lot of luma fusion on this so i wasn't scared coming into the ipad knowing that I can or cannot edit videos. And also it's a chance to try out Final Cut on iPad since it's the only program I use to edit all my videos on my MacBook. So I figured it's gonna be a similar experience and just to see how it's like using Final Cut on the iPad. Now from my experience of using the 2018 to the 2024 model, a lot of stuff has been improved like the stage manager where it's useful when writing scripts and being able to switch around so quickly and also doing other stuff like reading emails or uploading videos on both IG and TikTok at the same time. So I find that pretty cool. And the file management is a lot better than 2018, but of course that is still a limiting factor on the iPad. I will admit that I've stopped editing on iPad 2018 a while ago just because I've I've noticed that I've been editing a lot faster on a MacBook, obviously, and it does take a long time finishing a project that are more complicated with a lot more effects, titles, and a lot of like transforming images around. So that is the biggest reason why I switched back to the MacBook. But for the past few years, a lot of things has changed. I've been doing a lot more short form content. So the whole editing style is a lot different, is a lot more simpler. So I've noticed that I can obviously do this quicker on the iPad as well. Obviously not as quick as the laptop, but at least I get to know that I can do this on iPad on a smaller package wherever I go. Now my content is super easy and simple right now. It's the ASMR unboxing content, so there's not a lot of going on. So yeah, after a while of editing content, it's possible I got the hang of it, so it is easy to do. But of course, I still edit a lot faster on my MacBook. So when I'm at home, I'm gonna be on my laptop, on my desk, editing, so that way I can like pump out content quicker. Whereas on iPad, I can see it more. I know it's possible to edit my content when I'm traveling. So I did bring this to Milan and I did edit some content on the way there. All I have was my iPhone, my um, AirPods Pro and the iPad 11 inch and everything feels super compact. I don't have a lot of equipment on me. So I feel lightweight, I feel like I'm nimble. And there are some things I liked about traveling with the iPad more than the laptop. At first, I was a bit nervous about what I couldn't do, but after the trip, everything I do normally on a laptop, I can do on an iPad. And as I mentioned, the experience on some things are a lot better on an iPad, like watching content. I can easily open up an app and just start watching quicker than I would on a laptop. And I noticed that when I'm at the event, I'm more willing to bring the iPad more than a laptop just because of course it's lighter, but I don't need a 15 inch laptop to type notes, which I can do on the iPad. And if I get any free time during the event, I can be productive, not just writing scripts and answering emails, but like knowing that I can get creative work done. Now, there is one concern about using the Magic Keyboard is if I'm typing on my lap, it's fine. But when I start tapping on a screen, that's when the balancing is like really off and it might tip over. But other than that, everything about this is super great, super compact and easier to use. So it's ideal to actually work on a desk versus your lap. And throughout the trip, just having an iPad, iPhone, and AirPods Pro, the whole ecosystem feels so nice, especially using the AirPods Pro where I'm watching content in the hotel or on the airplane. And if I'm switching over to the phone to listen to music, it just switches right away. So I really appreciate that on the Apple ecosystem. And it's so fluid throughout these devices you have, especially if everything is from Apple. Now going into the nitty gritty about actually editing on the iPad Pro, specifically the Final Cut Pro app, it's still the same issue where once you start creating more complicated projects, it is still slower to do. And even though I would say it's still, it's still possible, it just takes a longer time to the point where, is it worth it at that point? Is it worth editing on an iPad knowing that you could, it can still be done, but you will be finished like probably two times faster if you were to edit that on the laptop. 
On top of that, the file management as well, even though it has gotten better from my experience from 2018, they are on specifically on the um, Final Cut Pro app, I'm used to the desktop version where I can actually have folders on certain things because I do camera comparisons. So I have a folder for one, for phone A, for phone B, and then like music and such like that. But I can't do that on an iPad, the Final Cut iPad Pro app because everything is just basically on the media projects in one whole folder. And I it's hard for me to, to decide if, if that's from the iPhone or if that's from phone B. So that's the part where it gets tricky for me to edit on and that's where I want to edit on a laptop instead. And I also do a lot of side-by-side -side pictures. So it does take a long time to copy and paste on each and every individual picture versus highlighting a whole bunch or the first layer and second layer, layer and copy and paste. And I can do that in seconds on a desktop version, whereas on the iPad, it might take me like five minutes. Or maybe I haven't found a way where I can highlight all those pictures and paste that certain attribute on all those photos. But if you do know how to do it, please let me know because that will save me a lot of time. And going off that, a lot of comparison videos I do are from Android as well. So it's hard for me to import the photos and videos into the iPad. The easiest way on iPad is to bring it to photos and then from photos, bring it to the files app to put things in more of an organized manner, which is sort of the same way as if I were to use an iPhone, but I get to use AirDrop, which is a lot easier and faster where I don't have to bring a cable. And to be fair, I can't import Android samples straight to the MacBook as well. I would need a specific Android app I am used to that process and it's just easier for me to like drag and drop all the files into the specific folder I want. So in my line of work, editing a camera sample is possible on the iPad. It just takes a very long time to do. I feel like by the time I'm done organizing everything on the iPad, I would probably be like 50% done on the laptop. So if I were to edit on the iPad, I would have to give myself a lot of time and I won't be in any rush. But if you're editing a normal tech review video like this, it's pretty easy or easier to do because it's less complicated. There's a lot less transforming or scaling. It's just placing B-roll on top of the A-roll. But if I were to make a camera comparison, I would bring the laptop over the iPad. And during the time I was testing on the iPad, Final Cut 2 came out. So of course I have to test it out. And I do like the fact that I can now edit off of external drive because now I can do all the organizing, which is much quicker to do on a laptop bring the hard drive with me and then I can edit off the iPad. And the new multi-cam feature with the four iPhones is pretty cool. I only have one, so I couldn't test it out, but I may be able to in the future if I buy more iPhones and then have some sort of like setup where I can actually do multiple angles or maybe do it on this set right here. Now the two main accessories I have is the Apple Pencil Pro and the Magic Keyboard, which I highly recommend the keyboard because if you do know about editing, having or getting used to shortcuts edits so much faster. So if you are gonna edit a lot of videos, the keyboard will help. For the pencil, I don't think it's necessary for editing. You can kind of treat it like a mouse and you can get a bit more accurate cuts, but I feel like overall, just having the trackpad with the keyboard, it's a two in one. And I think that it's not 100% necessary, but useful to have. And also the keys light up. So it's nice to be able to know that you can work in a dark as well. So my overall experience using the iPad Pro as a tech creator has been positive. I feel like I have done enough editing to the point where I know what device to bring now. Like I said before, if I'm doing something more complicated, it's the MacBook. And if I'm doing something more simple, it's gonna be the iPad. And even outside of the creative stuff like administration, productivity, even browsing through social media or just doing some downtime watching content, I know that I can do this on the iPad as well. So now that I have all the experience, I know that I'm not afraid to leave the laptop at home. And another bonus thing for me about having the iPad is when I'm going back to my hometown, I can just bring my Windows laptop to play games and I can just bring the iPad and get work done. So in the future, I hope the final management can be a bit better in terms of iPad OS or even in Final Cut app itself. Personally, I just like to be a bit more organized. So I feel like being able to create folders to further label certain things, especially if you have a lot of folders or a lot of files and photos and videos, makes it easier to label everything in the project media window. So that is my experience on iPad Pro 11 inch. I feel like this is a really great machine with some limiting factors, but let me know your overall thoughts on iPad. Will you be getting one as a creator or just to create content? Because I know it's possible. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.